Hello, my dear doctors. So today we're going to talk a bit about the aortic stenosis. Uh, continuing with my MRCP PACES uh, cardiology station presentation. Aortic stenosis is quite common in your PACES examination, and uh, one thing to remember is that. Um, Cardiology, if the, if the patient uh, is with aortic stenosis, normally the scenario will tell you that this patient has had syncope or patient has presented with the chest pain. And then um, and the patient will be older patient, maybe around in the 60s or in the 50s. So, obviously, going to start with the general examination, general physical, just inspection, taking a look at the patient. Then you go on and do the uh, cardiology, complete cardiological examination. So, if you see this scenario and the moment you feel for the pulse, you will, you will appreciate there is a slow rising small volume pulse. And the apex beat, it will be heaving, but or where it will not be displaced most of the time. Remember that the apex beat is normally displaced if the patient has regurgitation, whether it is aortic regurgitation or mitral regurgitation, where the apex beat will be displaced. It will not be displaced in cases of aortic stenosis. You may appreciate a systolic thrill at the aortic area, and the second heart sound will be soft. Then, on auscultation, you're going to appreciate an ejection click, which is followed by the ejection systolic murmur, and which is radiating to the carotids. And you're going to listen this murmur louder in the aortic area. So once you've done your presentation, you can say that I'd like, like to check the blood pressure, and normally I'll be expecting to see the narrow pulse pressure and the patient is at the moment not in cardiac failure normally they are quite stable patient in the PACES exam so this is how you're going to present your case starting with the pulse commenting about the apex beat any thrill commenting about the heart sound and finally commenting about the murmur so again, we're going to listen to the aortic stenosis murmur. So the murmur will be something like this. So it's an uh, ejection systolic murmur, crescendo, decrescendo murmur. It means that you can appreciate that it rises and then you can hear a fall. The other thing you can notice is the S2 is soft. You can appreciate a click. And very important thing, once you uh, appreciate the murmur is louder in the aortic area, you must uh, auscultated the carotids and most of the time the aortic stenosis murmur uh, will radiate to the carotids. Alright, so let's talk a bit about the causes of the aortic stenosis. So it can be congenital like a spit wall. It can be because of the rheumatic heart disease or degeneration or calcification in the elderly patients. So these are the main causes. What about the presentation? It can be coincidental finding only. Patient may be asymptomatic. Patient may present with exertional syncope, chest pain, or SOB. Patient can also present with heart failure more of a left ventricle failure than is followed by right ventricle failure and sometimes sudden death. Aortic stenosis in the elderly patients 
are mostly uh, underdiagnosed actually because normally they are come with non specific symptoms like exertional syncope and uh, we think that maybe it's because of the aging and everything so remember this 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 is how it can present what about the ejection systolic murmur uh, you can hear uh, the differential diagnosis you can hear ejection systolic murmur in aortic stenosis you can also hear in aortic sclerosis uh, aortic sclerosis if you don't uh, see that the second heart sound is not soft and the murmur is not radiating to the carotids then you can put aortic sclerosis there in your differential um, hypertrophic obstructive cardiomyopathy also will present with the systolic murmur and pulmonary stenosis can also present with the kind of injection systolic murmur either it is supravalvular or subvalvular but remember the murmur will be louder in the pulmonary area and it tends to radiate towards the um, left clavicle so these are the main uh, differential diagnosis for the ejection systolic murmur coming to the investigations as is with all um, valvular heart diseases we're going to start with the ecg and why you want to do ecg you want to look for left ventricular hypertrophy there may be some conduction defects maybe p mitrally which is bifid tall p wave or may have any evidence of coronary artery disease like maybe t wave inversions there or maybe any old q waves or lmi we're going to do the chest x ray and uh, in chest x ray we may see some calcification and cardiomegaly echocardiography obviously is the always the diagnostic of choice diagnosis of choice in cases of valvular heart disease and we'll mainly looking for the at the valve area how severe is the stenosis less than 1 cm is considered quite severe less than 0.8 cm square is considered critical and catheterization now remember in aortic stenosis normally it is there is some element of ischemic heart disease so it's always must do the cardiac catheterization to look for any blocked coronary arteries especially if we are planning for surgery because normally both procedures are done at the same time we're going to do the um, uh, bypass surgery and along with the aortic valve replacement so coming to the by our last word the examiner may ask you how you will manage the patient so remember we will divide into three groups conservative medical and surgical conservative is mainly just for observation but we're going to say the patient to avoid uh, strenuous activity medical is mainly for the complications like for heart failure we're going to prescribe some ac inhibitors diuretics important thing is in aortic stenosis we want to avoid the nitrates because it can uh, make the situation worse coming to the surgical uh, valve replacement uh, if the patient has left ventricular hypertrophy left ventricular failure ventricular tachycardia or the gradient is more than 50 that is the patient is symptomatic then we have to do some kind of surgery there are other options available called tavi which is actually trans aortic valve implantation normally done for the patients who are unfit for the surgery this procedures can be done and remember in children um, valvotomy and valvoplasty is preferred obviously uh, not going to do the valve replacement in small children so thank you very much my dear doctors uh, this was all about uh, your tick stenosis so try to remember the very few points but remember it well uh, because examination is quite short and you must have all this uh, uh, investigations management on your tips okay thank you very much and i will see you again